Hello there and welcome back to Sonic Safari, a channel featuring tales of record collecting. I am your host, Marcus, a Swedish hipster lost in the fog in San Francisco. Let's have the records do the talking, shall we? On last week's video, we talked about a new feature from Vitamin Please, Swap for Store Credit, which made me reconsider how to use Vitamin Please as a great source for finding new records. Today, I want to talk about vinyl collecting predictions for 2022. So cue the spooky music, get your crystal ball ready. We are looking into the future today. All right, I know, maybe predictions isn't the right word to use. These are thoughts, musings, 3 a.m., why am I thinking of this instead of sleeping kind of thing. So there's, of course, nothing scientific about this. These are just my thoughts of where I think the record collecting market is heading. And obviously I would love to hear your thoughts as well. So if you didn't know it already, vinyl is back with a vengeance and all numbers are pointing to the same fact. Vinyl sales have increased 16 years straight in the US and in 2021 accounting for 41% of all album sales, which is great. However, if you also consider the downloading of single song and streaming, vinyl is just under 5% of total music consumption. So it's still a tiny slice, but what a delicious slice it is. And that's really my first point. I think the size of the vinyl market really matters. And I think vinyl will continue to be the primary way of consuming albums versus CDs and digital moving forward. So what impact do I think that that will have? Well, I think that in the past, the market has really been trying to get people to buy vinyl, but now they have people's attention. So it will move towards volume. People have really been thinking about vinyl as that kind of dusty memories of your parents' collection to being a physical interaction with music in a world that is becoming more and more digital. So I think vinyl is not going anywhere and that's only highlighted by big players like Target and Walmart entering the market. But again, the size of the vinyl market really matters. So what happens now when it's so much bigger? Well, I think that previously, the way to sell vinyl was really centered around a notion of exclusivity, which can translate into colored vinyl, but also things as extra songs, B-side, studio outtakes, or even details such as the weight of the vinyl. So the 180 versus 200, where you're at. But if right now we really don't need to get people's attention to buy vinyl anymore, we step into prediction number two, which is special editions aren't really special anymore. The very notion of something being special or limited, exclusive, is that there's few of them, but if all the releases right now is marketed the same way and more and more players are entering the market with the same selling point, well, we don't really get the oohs and ah, so I have that very special record anymore because everything is kind of special and limited, so the selling point can get washed out. Things are so extreme that even things that aren't supposed to be limited become limited because there is so much demand. One example is this one, Chet Baker Sings, originally released in 1954 on Pacific Jazz, and this is the 2020 tone Poet version. This one is technically still in print and will be repressed more time, but it's still going for $150 on Discogs because people just can't wait. So I think there is a bit of a hype around the limited versions. And again, with more players pushing more releases into the market with the same notion of limited or exclusive, I think there's a risk of people getting overwhelmed. Okay, so hold on a second. Don't get me wrong. I do love limited editions. I mean, who doesn't? I just hope that we move away from the gimmicks like colored vinyl and even worse, the really short runs that go straight to the aftermarket. Anyways, to be focused about the music. What I want is high quality releases that has something to do with the record in the first place. And I think two good examples are these one. The first one, The Nationals, I am easy to find on 4AD from 2019. So this one includes the score from the short film that accompanied the release in the first place. And it's almost better than the record itself, but don't say that to anyone out loud. We also have this one, Jose Gonzalez. Wiener, this is the 10th anniversary edition on Mute Records from 2006, and it includes the EP Australian Tour, which includes two amazing renditions of Kylie Minogue's Hand on Your Heart and Joy Division's Love Will Tear Us Apart, music before a gimmick. So let's imagine the following scenario. If on one side we have more and more players entering the market and a lot of times pushing multiple variants of the same release, think Adele, Taylor Swift, 
And on the other side, we have the problems with shipping right now and also the backup at the pressing plants. We could see a situation where the market gets flooded with the releases. What I mean by that is three things happening kind of at the same time. First, shipping starts to run smoother. Second, the pressing plants start to catch up, releasing a lot of releases at the same time and again with a lot of variants of the same release. Now, if the special edition isn't that special anymore, we could be at a point where the supply is higher than demand and we are overwhelmed as end consumers. So my next prediction, or maybe it's more of a hope, is that instead of focusing on special or limited editions, we will get high quality but affordable editions at volume. Music first, quality first, and most importantly, access to buy it. So take the Blue Note Classic series, for example. These are some of the best jazz recordings ever made, and they're pressed on an audiophile quality. So a record like this, Horace Silver's Piece of Silver, it's pretty remarkable that you can get an audiophile pressing of this for only about $25 in the US. These records have been reissued on European labels such as Wax Time or DOL, and the argument was that if you only want the music and you don't care about the quality so much, you can get them for a very affordable price, but now you can get the audiophile versions for basically the same price, so I really hope that this is a trend that will continue. I also wonder with everything going on right now if there will be a trend with less pre-orders moving forward. Of course the purpose of doing a pre-order is that you get it on the day of release, but I've had so many times now where I go to a record store, I see a release I want, and I'm still waiting for my pre-order that I did months ago. An example is the Radiohead Kid Amnesia release that came out on November 4th, and I got this one at the end of January. I know that looking at the world right now, this is a very minor issue, but in my collector head, I am fuming. All the problems with pre-orders could, of course, get solved moving forward, but I wonder if there's going to be a lasting impact if the experience of doing pre-order is negative and maybe it will get people to buy on release day instead and actually get people to go to the store, which would kind of be a good thing. And getting people to go to a physical record store is part of my very last prediction, which is that record store day will turn into something else. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Record Store Day and I think fundamentally it's a great idea, but remember the situation now is very different from let's say 10 years ago. And it's not so much trying to get people to buy a record as it is to try to get them to a physical store, so the format right now just doesn't achieve that in my point of view. So you basically get two days a year where a combination of a lot of interest and low runs collide really just creating a very hot aftermarket. And I see an interesting trend that when you look at RSD releases from a couple of years ago, they start to trickle out on the market again and the prices are going down. Now, it might be a coincidence, but only in the last two months, I have found four Record Store Day releases out in the wild that were really hot at the time at retail prices and they were still in the shrink. One of them being this one, Bill Evans' Behind the Dykes from 2021 on Elemental Music. And also this one, Wes Montgomery, back on Indiana Avenue on Resonance Records from 2019. And this is actually a promo copy. So I guess my point is that it might be a trend that the price of the record store releases peaks and then slowly goes down over again when the attention goes to the next Record Store Day releases. And that's also why I think that the Indie Store exclusives is a really interesting idea and maybe Record Store Day should turn into something like that, where you have releases coming at a regular cadence, a reason to go back into your store every single month. It's not a long line, it's not a fear of missing out. And Record Store Day can really be a day where we celebrate the community, the people that love to buy records over a barbecue and a cold beer maybe. But yet again, these predictions are only musings and thoughts on my side. And I would of course love to hear from you. What do you think is gonna happen with vinyl collecting moving forward? What I would say though, is that it's incredible to live at a time with so much incredible music coming out. And 
We all know that that moment of stumbling across an incredible record at a record store somewhere is right around the corner. All right, so that's it for today's episode. Like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. On the next episode, the result from my record purge and a deep dive into Blue Note compilations. Until then, tack och